again, Barlow's resident uh, shooting advisor. Uh, today, what we're going to be talking about is it's all come to the end of the shoot season, so it's now time to be thinking about preparing our gun best for storage in the cupboard. Some of us may not see it till the start of the next season. Some of us may well see shooting pigeons or clay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through a few key points on how to keep your, keep your gun the best clean before it goes away for storage. So basically today, what we'll do is we're going to use my gun, which is very badly looked after, so I hope you guys look after yours better than me. So we'll put it, take it to bits and we'll start giving it a clean. So basically, not everyone has a vice to use, but today I will be using a vice. So just one key thing when closing a vice is make sure that you don't touch your, your injector work. So just slowly close it in. The basic cleaning kit is going to consist of a rod, a wire brush which is going to clear all the fouling out of the barrel, scrubbing it nice and clean, making sure that when we do put it away into the cupboard, any fouling's gone out of the way. Followed by a jag, which will put some tissue inside, which will clean the film, all the dirt, take all the rubbish out of the barrel. Followed by the mop, which will put a, a few dogs of oil on and just line the barrel to keep it nice and fresh and clean for the next time we come out to use it. So, basically, using oil as a lubricant to help clean the barrel. For most people, you can use a spray on oil. There's lots of good oils on the market. Today, I'll be using um, an old fashioned Gunsmith bore wash. So, I shall dip my wire brush into the bore wash, making sure it's properly soaked. I shall then put it into the barrel, making sure that we really concentrate on the first sort of six to eight inches of the barrel. That's where, where the main bore is, which is where a lot of the residue come, comes out. Then, making sure you strike it right the way along the length of the barrel. And at the same time, concentrating on the last couple of inches, because that's where your tube soaks off. Really scrubbing that, making sure that the brush is coming out clean, but also making sure that you don't crush your knuckles against the face of the gun, which will cut and it hurt. Give both barrels a real good scrub. So now I've finished the wire brushing, I'm going to detach my wire brush and attach a thing called the jag. Jags can come in various shapes and sizes, that's what this one is today. Uh, they can come just as a sort of plain central piece of a split pin almost effect. Either either they they all work exactly the same. What I usually do is I put a piece of paper down for it to make sure this is going to take away all the fouling and all the residue that's been left in the barrel from us wire brushing. So like that. And then we'll turn it around like so. Once we've done that, insert it into the barrel and just slowly work it down through to the end and then you can see we take a little bit of that. I usually do this a couple of times to make sure I clear the barrel of all the fouling residue. It needs to be able to change paper as well. So that paper's got real dirty there. Pull it back out and as you can see. That's all the fouling and nastiness that we want out of, out of the barrels because if that, if it was left in for storage, will do damage. So we've got rid of that. I'll go back through again so we get a bit of a cleaner piece of paper. Finally, again, a piece of clear paper which is indicating now that the barrel has got rid of all the dirt and residue that was in it. Pull it back through. And do the hot holes in the barrel. Hopefully, same effect with that which we have now got. Which means that the barrel's ready. So now we've finished using the jag, clearing the bore, we'll take the jag off and we'll put the mop on. So I attach my mop and what we're going to be using this for is putting a few dots of oil on it and putting a nice film of oil down the barrel so when we do store it away it helps to preserve the barrel and stop, stop any corrosion of any remaining residue that has actually been left in. But like I said, we've got rid of the worst in now, so it should be fine. So I'll just chop some oil on my mop. And I'll just do exactly the same process again. Push it right the way through the bore and out the other end. So now that's got a nice film of oil. I'll put some more oil on the mop and do, do the lower bow. Now in terms of oil to use, there's lots of good oils on the market. There's a 3 one oil. In fact, there's lots of good oils that we can use. We stock them at Farlow's. There's plenty of them available. Push that through the bottom barrel once again. Nice oil film all the way through and back out. 
Then what we do is we take the barrels out. What we usually do is put them up to some clear air so you can look down the length of the barrel to make sure that there isn't any other bits or pieces that have been left in. It should be reasonably clean. It's always best to check and have a look. They're looking really clean now. So now what we'll do is we'll move on to the second process of the cleaning. So now on to the second process of, of the cleaning. So the ejects work on the outside face of your barrels is incredibly important to keep that clean and make sure that we haven't got any dirt, wetness, moisture in there because whilst we store it away, this is one prime area that will start to rust. So when you go to get your gun out after, after it's been in the store all summer, the eject work sticking that could be the nightmare, especially if it's that busy drive, no one wants it. So what I usually do is get an oily towel and start cleaning, just give it a good brush off all around the key areas. So your key areas are, are where the ejector works all free in the spring. These are browning ejectors, so these are slightly different to say how a Beretta or any other gun would work. So each gun needs a little bit of different care, but the basics of what I'm doing now is a, is a key principle that should be employed. So what I've done is I've got rid of all the dust and anything dirt around, around those parts. And I now once again use my oil to just give it not too much oil, just a little bit of oil in those key places just to make sure that storage all, all, all helps with the storage. So I'm just oiling up around my key areas to make sure. And what I'll do now is just to make, obviously we've now oiled it, which is great, but we don't want to leave all that oil as residue, because I'll explain that shortly. So we'll just clean it off. It's got a nice film of oil on. Clean it all around those ejector to work. And that's all clean, so that, that's another part of the system done now. So barrels have all been done, ready to go. It'll be one final check, which will give it a nice sweep off once we finish with all the oily jobs. So we'll now move on to the stock. There's so many ways in which you can do this, but fundamentally, they all aim to do and achieve the same thing. Without having to go and take all the parts off the gun, which I'd only suggest really you do if you're fully confident at it, or if you, if you take it to a gunsmith, a good basic clean that you can do either using a spray oil, or once again just a bit of oil, just start putting a bit around the joints in these areas which, which look like there's a lot of wear and tear in the key components, and once again oily rag or a piece of toweling like I'm using, and just give them a good scrub off. And what you'll see is you're, you're working away all the dirt and residue that's built itself up in there, which may actually cause rusting and wear and tear of the parts quicker than if it was left by itself. So. And as you can see, I've got a dirty towel there, which means that I've taken away a lot of dirt, which is good. And then same sort of thing again on the outside to make sure that everything's got clean, oily rag, and just start giving it all a nice scrub off, making sure, giving it shiny to make sure it's going into the store, nice and ready for next time you pick it up. So, moving on to the woodwork. A lot of woodwork nowadays has got laminate, laminate stock, so oiling and everything like that isn't as necessary, but I always like to give even my laminate stock just a bit of a brush up. So what I usually do is once again, get in the old faithful oily rag. I will rule, rule so that they just one thing, have one rag for your oil and dirt and have another rag to clean. So what I use here is that's my oily rag to put oil and apply oil with, and then that is to clean. So I'll put a bit of stock oil on, and then start cleaning my woodwork. Another key area to clean is the gun butt, making sure that there's no dirt or anything, because that's the key part that goes into your shoulder. So making sure that's all clean as well, all helps for when we put it away. Now all the three key components of the gun are clean, let's put it back together. So I attach my barrel back, making sure certain that every gun's different with these brownings. The ejectors have to be forward like that, putting them in and attaching the barrels. Four end, back into the main block work, bit of a tap, and we're good, ready to go. Looking along the barrels, nice and clean now, no, no oil coming through, so I've cleaned up all that extra oil that I have put in place. And now, what we'll do is give it one final brush over, really making sure we clean her up, and make her look nice and clean for the sleep she's about to have for the next couple of months in most cases. So that's it for the day guys. I hope you picked up a few useful tips on how to clean your gun and put it away for the summer period. So if there's any more questions or queries, don't hesitate to get in contact with us in store. Give us a ring or visit farlowscott.co.uk. 
and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all our future videos and join our emailing list. Thanks very much and we'll catch you soon.